of there. So as you can see, the bike's all loaded behind me and ready to go. It was a lovely thunderstorm last night, lots of lightning and loud crashes of thunder. There wasn't much rain, but, uh, but my tent was waterproof anyway, so no worries. About 80 or 90 kilometers to go today. So we'll see what the day brings. I'll uh, give you some videos from the road. Cheers for now. So the campsite that I was staying at was called Camping Thomas, and it was halfway between a town called Primerston and another town called Broderica. As it turned out, it cost me 40 kuna to stay there for the night, which is still a bargain, so I think it's around about 5 euros. So thank you very much Camping Thomas, and I managed to charge all my gear up. I even washed some clothes there and dried them out on the line, although the thunderstorm then made them slightly wet again. But uh, never mind, it's all part of the fun of bicycle touring. Talking of which, if you are planning a bicycle tour in Croatia or any of the countries that I'm passing through on the Greece to England cycle ride, you might find my website useful at www.davestravelpages.com. And if you have a look there, you'll find that there's a menu system at the top. Just click on to the Greece to England cycle ride and there's tons of information in there about all the countries I'm passing through. So I'm writing articles about bicycle touring in each country. So I've already got Albania and I've got Greece on there. Montenegro's coming, obviously Croatia's coming, and every country I go through I'll be, be writing an article. And in the article I'll be including the vlogs that I'm making, uh, some details about the road, and also the routes that I took because I'm recording everything on my GPS and then the maps are there. So if you happen to be planning a bicycle tour you might find it useful if you can see the routes that I took and the roads that I took and if you want to follow the same road then that's great. So, back onto the bicycle touring of the day itself. It was uh, a longish day, but, uh, but quite rewarding. It was a bit of a mixed bag, as you'll see later on, in terms of the weather. Uh, this is, um, you know, it, it, Croatia is a beautiful country, I have to say. I've been, uh, I think my eyes have been opened wide with how beautiful Croatia is. Not just the coastlines, there's, uh, there's the inner parts are beautiful as well, although I'm not, I'm not going inland a great deal. But the mountains are certainly ever present and they're beautiful and yeah, it's, it's, um, it's been a very nice experience. In some ways though, I'm still a little bit hesitant about the prices of some things. I still think it's quite an expensive country, certainly compared to the uh, other countries that I've come through through the Balkans to reach here. But uh, well, you know, that price is the price, isn't it? So passing through a town and a city here, when, it's, when I'm cycling through a town and a city, I always want to get through as quickly as I can. It's, uh, I, I don't know, I prefer just hitting the open road more than anything else really. I, actually, I prefer hitting dirt tracks, but it's, uh, on, on this particular bicycle tour, I've, A, I haven't got the time, and, uh, and B, some of the routes that I want to take haven't got dirt track available, but there we go. So as I went through the town, hitting the road again, you can start to see that the clouds are, are building up and yes, inevitably it is going to rain very soon. So what do you do when it starts to rain? That is a very good question. Let's find out. Ah, the light pitter-patter of rain. In a way, this is sort of the worst sort of rain and also the worst sort of time of day. So I'm 60 kilometers into the journey it's a little bit too short to call it a day, even though I've seen some campsites. And it's not quite wet enough to put all my wet weather gear on, because I've still got some hills. So what do you do? Well, I've decided just to sit it out for five minutes in this bus shelter, keeping the Kibo nice and dry. And hopefully the weather will turn around a bit, because over there, if you can see, there's a nice blue sky, but in the direction I'm heading, kind of a little bit cloudy. So, I guess I'll play I Spy with myself or some other game to keep myself amused. Speak to you later. Bye. Well, the rain let up in the end, enough for me to hit the road again. I think I was uh, in the lay-by for about 25 minutes or half an hour, so I think it was time well spent, really. It just meant that my clothes weren't absolutely soaking, so although the road was a little bit wet when I got onto it again, 
obviously I'm not a soaking cold mess, which is very good. And as you can see from the video, I'm heading towards that little bit of blue sky. How awesome is that? There's clouds everywhere, but the bit I'm heading for is all blue. Yeah, we like that. So, cycling along, I've been seeing uh, some other cyclists on this trip. And it seems that the, the, nor the further north I go, the more cyclists that I see. I don't, not sure what you call a collection of cyclists. Is it, uh, you know, you have like a school of flit, a fish or a flock of birds. You know, is it a pedal of cyclists or a hub of cyclists? I don't know. Anyway, we're about to see a pedal of cyclists in a second. So as we come up here, you'll find that there's two cyclists coming opposite to me. Now we seem to be going too fast to, to stop. And that's happened a few times now where I've been like going uphill and somebody's been going downhill and we just whiz past as we've done there. Now on the right hand side I'm about to pass another lot of cyclists, however these aren't touring cyclists so although they've got bags on the back I couldn't quite place where they were and it took me a while to think about it and I think what they are is they're camper van owners that have probably taken their bikes out for a little ride. So I don't know if, you, if you've seen on the video, there's plenty of camper vans going up the road because you get a lot of retirees from Northern Europe. They come down to the Southern countries and spend months there uh, because they can, you know, they've retired, they've got money, they've got their camper vans, that's what they do. And on the backs of them, they've always got bicycles. And I think these guys have just gone out for a cycle and then got caught in the rain. Anyway, they were going far too slowly for me. So I had to show them up a little bit. Okay, they're in their seventies probably, but what the hell, you know, still got to show them up. So those, those ones are at the back and obviously the people in front have already pulled away from them and they're thinking, yeah, I'm pretty good, but nah, you're not as good as the Briggs because the Briggs is coming up, the Briggs is going to take you now, look, yeah, that's right, you look to your left, yeah, you've been owned, yeah, you've been owned as well, and the guy in the front, he thinks he's pedalling away, yeah, you're not happy, you've been totally owned, who's the boss, who's the daddy, sorry, I lost myself there. Anyway, moving on, uh, it was a matter of cycling towards Zadar and I hadn't really got a fixed destination uh, stop point in mind. It was just a matter of finding a campsite. So around 70, 80 kilometers, I decided to, you know, the next campsite I found, I'd, I'd pop in and see how much it cost. And it's, it was a good one. I've uh, taken a picture of the sign and it's called Camping Bozo. And you'll see that as this final sign now. Eight euros a night, so not bad. But really, Camping Bozo, check it out. <laughs> 